Are your drone flights about to become illegal? Will you need new gear, new qualifications, or even a tracker broadcasting your every move? The UK drone laws are about to change dramatically. Today we're breaking down the CAA's official proposal in the CAP 3105 and why they matter to you. Whatever you fly, recreationally, for clients, or just the love of your drone, these changes affect all of us. Spoiler alert, one of the proposals is remote ID. Drop a comment now to let me know how you feel about that. Will you upgrade your drone or stick with what you've got? And don't forget to hit like so more remote pilots see this. In May 2025, the Civil Aviation Authority published CAP 3105, their formal reply to the 2023 consultation on UK drone laws. Their aim? to foster growth within the UAS sector by simplifying the regulatory framework and enabling new and innovative use cases. The key proposals include UK specific class markings, UK 0 to UK 6, remote ID rollout, clearer category names, flashing lights for night flights, flyer ID for drones of 100 grams and more. What do you think? Is this simplifying things or making it more complicated? So let's see who's responded. Model aircraft flyers provided 2,681, responses 77.1% through the online form. That's a huge chunk. But here's the nuance. Although model aircraft flyers made up the majority of the consultation responses, most of them will be continue flying under the specific category using Article 16 authorizations, not in the open category at all. So should pilots who don't fly in the open category dominate the open category consultation? Comment to let me know your thoughts. Another key proposal in the CAP 3105 is to make the open category easier to understand by renaming the subcategories. We are therefore proposing to rename the operational subcategories. This aims to make it more intuitive. A1 becomes over people, A2 becomes near people, and A3 becomes far from people. These names reflect what really matters, how close you're allowed to fly to people. A welcome move, especially for new pilots trying to decode the rules. CAP 3105 also proposes to adjust separation distances, particularly in the A3 subcategory. We therefore propose to introduce a regulatory requirement in the A3 subcategory for UAS to fly a minimum horizontal distance of 50M from uninvolved persons and from individual buildings. Now, if you're flying in the A3, far from people subcategory, you'll need to stay at least 50 meters horizontally from people and also 50 meters from individual buildings even outside built-up areas. This clears up a long-standing confusion about what counts as a built-up area and how far is far enough. Clear rules equals safer flying. What do you think of the new names and clarified distances? Better or just more words? Tell me below. We propose to require remote pilots of UAS weighing 100G or more to obtain a flyer ID. All UAS weighing less than 100G would be excluded from operator ID and flyer ID requirements. Days of grab and go flying a mini sub 250 gram drone may be numbered. Almost all camera drones will now require a flyer ID, but the flyer ID itself is also getting an upgrade. We are already taking forward the proposal to introduce updated user-friendly guidance on the CAA website, aiming to eventually phase out the CAP 722 series this means simpler clearer study material for new pilots easier navigation with non-technical language new consolidated guidance to replace confusing legacy documents and i really hope it will include support for understanding basic airspace rules like no tams and restricted zones i hope it will provide encouragement to assess weather conditions such as rain and wind i really hope this will improve awareness of drone specs like ip ratings and what conditions people's drones can safely handle the fly id test is free and online and now it's being improved with better guidance clearer examples and less jargon. This should make it easier for everyone to learn the rules and fly legally. Do you think the fly ID test is enough training? Should it be harder, easier or replaced? I'd love to hear what you think. We are proposing for EU class marked UAS to be able to operate in the open category until the 1st of January, 2028. We propose to allow self-declaration until the 31st of December, 2027. Finally, we're gonna have access to the EU C-Class marked drones, and that should give us more freedom to where we can fly. However, do you remember the debacle when the Department of Transport pulled the C-1 drones from the legislation 
after the launch of the first C1 marked Mavic 3 Classic back in late 2022. I wonder how many would have rushed out to buy this new kit only for the permissions to be removed. We propose to allow C1 UK 1 UAS to overfly uninvolved people. That means that drones up to 900 grams could operate under the A1 over people category, potentially making models like the DJI Air 3S the new gold standard. Is it time to upgrade from your Mini? Or does portability still win? Let me know what you're flying. The Department for Transport have announced that the CAA will be appointed as the Market Surveillance Authority for UAS. This is a huge shift in responsibility for the CAA, a body that's been criticised for slow updates and conflicting guidance. Can they rise to the challenge, I wonder? What's your experience been with the CAA? I've seen many instances of people emailing them for guidance and getting the wrong information. We'll potentially feature some responses in a future video. We propose to require operations with UK Zero weighing 100 grams or more with a camera and legacy UAS to have active and up-to-date direct remote ID functionality. This is a big one. From the 1st of January 2026, it's for UK 1 to UK 3. From the 1st of January 2028, for most other drones of 100 grams or more. In the United States, remote ID has been in place since September 2023, and the rollout wasn't smooth. Many drone pilots reported issues such as firmware delays, from manufacturers, remote ID modules being expensive or hard to find, inconsistent enforcement from the FAA, concerns about pilot locations being visible to the public in real time. Some pilots even grounded their drones temporarily while waiting for compliant updates. This suggests that while remote ID is theoretically helpful for security implementation, can be messy, expensive. Would you install a module or just stop flying or replace your drone? Tell me in the comments. So which DJI drones will be support? remote ID. All drones with an EU C1 mark and above are already equipped with remote ID hardware. It might just need a software update to enable this. These include the DJI Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro, Mini 4, Air 2S, Air 3, Air 3S, Mavic 3 series, the Avatar 1 and 2 and of course the Mavic 4 Pro. I'd expect that older drones like the Phantom 4 and Mavic 2 will need an add-on modules but what about newer drones like the DJI Neo, the Flip and derivatives of the Mini 2, all needing a remote ID module from January 2028. Do you think DJI will update these newer lightweight drones to include this functionality or will be left having to attach modules? We will continue to work to develop a full hybrid remote ID solution a hybrid remote ID system combines two technologies. Direct remote ID means your drone broadcasts your identity and location to anybody nearby. It uses Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and doesn't rely on the internet. Network remote ID, on the other hand, sends that same data through the internet to a central database in real time. Hybrid remote ID combines both systems. Your drone will broadcast locally and also send your data to a central system the UK plan to adopt this setup in the future. The UK intends to start with direct remote ID in 2026 and then develop hybrid remote ID over time. But here's where it gets worrying. If network remote ID becomes mandatory, it means that data could be stored, analysed or cross-referenced. Access could be granted to the police, enforcement bodies or even third-party service providers. Imagine a company mining this live drone data to issue fines automatically for airspace breaches, just like an AMPR camera does for traffic or journalists or members of the public accessing real-time drone pilot locations. At the moment the CAP 3105 does not specify who owns the data, who will control access to the data, whether drone operators will be notified if their data is accessed. The A2 CFC is still valid but it's been unrepresented in the CAP 3105 and now one of its key benefits is being removed. We are therefore proposing for UAS operations with legacy UAS weighing between 250G and 499G to only be allowed in the A2 or A3 subcategory. Previously with an A2 CFC, you could fly legacy drones under 500 grams like the original Mavic Air in the A1 subcategory. It remains to be seen whether the original benefits of the A2 CFC like flying C2 drones down to a minimum separation distance of five meters will be maintained. This could mean, instead of rewarding extra training, the new rules roll back freedoms for qualified pilots, including those using older drones or custom-built FPV quads. This move could push hobbyists away from older but capable drones. 
undermine the incentive to take the A2CFC, create confusion for pilots who thought training equals more flying freedom. And if you want better missions than the open category, your only real path is a GVC and a specific category which comes with a hefty price tag. So what's the CAA really doing to promote safer flying through education? Do you think the CAA is making it easier or harder to fly legally and safely? Shouldn't there be a better stepping stones between the flyer ID and the specific category with the GVC? Let us know in the comments. Another proposal in the CAP 3105 is to enhance geo awareness. We are proposing to implement geo awareness to help prevent UAS entering restricted airspace without appropriate permission. Geo awareness means your drone would alert you or even stop you from flying into restricted airspace. Sounds smart, right? but we've been here before. A few years ago, DJI implemented a geofencing system that would prevent pilots from flying in areas it flagged as restricted, but DJI's airspace maps were often wrong, showing restrictions where none existed or missing real ones. Pilots could unlock restricted zones by filling out a form on DJI's website, which looked official, but had no legal authority. Many assumed DJI's system reflected the law it didn't. Some drone operators relied entirely on DJI's GI awareness, ignoring trusted UK sources like the Drone Assist app by Altitude Angel and Drone Safety Map. Even worse, no TAMs were not shown on DJI's system, leaving pilots unaware of temporary restrictions. Will the new CAA-backed system be any better? That depends. CAP 3105 doesn't say how frequent maps will be updated or if drones will need mobile data to stay current. For many DJI and similar drones, geo awareness is baked into the firmware of the drone itself. Updating maps requires internet access. In remote areas with no signal, it, this becomes a major obstacle. Pilots rely only on out-of-date geofencing instead of official data sources it could actually make things worse. Do you think mandatory geo awareness is a good thing or should pilots be trusted to check airspace themselves? Model aircraft will be exempt if operated at club sites under Article 16 authorizations. No major changes are proposed to the specific category or Article 16 authorization used by BMFA or FPV UK users. Some of these changes are genuinely helpful. Others raise major questions. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're flying a sub 250 gram drone or you're gonna move up to a C1, do you trust the CAA to deliver? What's your biggest concern? These proposals are not law yet. Here's what happens next. The CAA will submit a formal policy recommendations to the Department of Transport, the DFT. The DFT will review the proposals and decide which ones to accept. If accepted, they will be written into legislation. Final regulations must be debated and passed by Parliament. There's no exact timeline, but the CAA states. The timetable for this statutory instrument will be determined by the DFT. So while some changes could begin as early as January 2026, others like remote ID may not come in until 2028 or later. This is a moving target. If you're a drone pilot in the UK, now is the time to speak up and get informed and stay engaged. So hit the subscribe and join us as we follow every update and fight for safe, sensible drone regulations. Until next time, fly safe, stay legal, and as always, ask questions.